I was in third or fourth grade. My mom and dad had uh, signed me up for a day camp. It's through our local YMCA. Dropped us off at a park and we'd go there and we'd get there in the morning, stay there until about mid afternoon. It was a fun time with games, learning about nature, doing all sorts of different activities. But I have to admit, what I was really interested in is there was this <coughs> little girl there that I uh, started to crush on. You know, I, I thought she was pretty special. We didn't really talk to her at all, but you know, you didn't really need that at that age. And I figured on the last day, I wanted her to know that I was a pretty neat guy. On the last day, we uh, they sent us to, uh, uh, we got to go to the YMCA pool. And really for the last afternoon, we got to uh, just swim. I could have chose to do any number of things. Could have played 500 with some of the guys. But what I really wanted more than anything was that girl to know that I was a pretty good swimmer. I could hold my breath for quite a long time. And so what I did is it's pretty much I just hurried her down and swam around her most of uh, that afternoon. You know, swimming fast from one side to the next, going underwater, holding my breath for long periods of time, doing the occasional flip. And I tell you what, I'll let you know, she noticed. She noticed. And I found out that there is something about her that she wanted me to know. So she tapped me on the shoulder, and what did you want? <laughs> She had a big mouthful of water and she just spit it in my face. Now I know what some of you are thinking. This is her way of brushing me off. No, no, no. See, she, she was unique. She had three little slits in her teeth and she could spit water out in these three spots. And she thought it was important. She, 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 she was trying to impress me. Just like I was trying to impress her. And we left there both feeling like we helped the person we were with get to know us a little bit better. I know it's pretty sad that here you are, you leave, and all you really know is that the one person can spit, the other person can spit water really cool. But have you, have you ever left? Have you ever wanted to be known? Maybe an interview, maybe a date, Maybe in a conversation with somebody where you wanted them to know who you were. I mean, you, the depths of your being, that's, that's what you wanted. That's, that's all you really wanted was to be known, for them to know who you are. Today, we get together because we have a God who wants to be known and unwrap the fullness of who God is in the power of the resurrection. And so today we're going to take time talking about, I mean, and that's the thing is, is that literally I can go on for hours, I do not. But we're going to go on and just talk a little bit about how God has shared who God is with us today. And hopefully in getting to know a little bit about how God has shared who God is today will take time to open up our hearts and our lives to God's movement here on earth today. You know, it's one of the things is, is that, you know, ultimately through the cross and through the resurrection, it's one of the things that we get to hear and get to understand about God, that our God is a promise keeper. You don't come down and you don't walk on this earth you don't teach, you don't get punished on the cross. Unless the promises that you have and you have given to humanity mean something to you. And in the heart of that promise is that we are made in the image and the reflection of God. I mean, there's no fuller way of claiming and saying how important a people are than by coming and being one of us. Nothing more important than saying that how important you are by sitting here saying, I'm going to come and I'm going to share who I am by being like you. 
coming into the world, not a bunch of times, but just once, just like you have to. And I'm going to show you how you can live in the fullness of who I am. And I'm going to show you who God is and who you're called to be as I live for you, as I die for you. What God's saying here in that essentially is we're made in this image that we're made to be a reflection. We're made to be a reflection of who God is. We're made to be the image bearers. There's, it doesn't make sense otherwise to come down in our form and to live the way that he lived, to endure what he had to endure. Unless this matters. Listen, this is part of not only who God has made us to be, but who God is and who we are called to be. Two, you don't endure the cross, you don't go through this, you don't come and have the power of the resurrection unless it's a sense and this understanding that really what God promised when he said that, guess what, I'm giving you dominion of this world, I'm giving you control of this world, I want you to have ownership in it and really the depths of who I am, who I am, is to want you to be the best you you can be. I want to lift you up and raise you up. That I literally have given you control. That this is also at the heart and the soul of who God is and how God is sharing who God is. When I give life, when I give love, it has helped you to be the best you you can be. That's the type of love that I give. Not to control you, not to dominate over you. And this is so important for us to realize and for us to understand when it comes to faith, when it comes to God. Because I tell you what, the religious leaders, when they crucified Christ, part of them was like, guess what? If God, if this is really God, God will take away all the bad stuff we're doing. So people justify oftentimes not helping in the name of God. We can do all this bad stuff because if God really wanted us to stop, God would stop us. Instead, what God says is, guess what? I have given you control. And you can take something holy and pure and you can manipulate it and treat it to something bad. Or you can take it for its intended purpose. The intended purpose to live is like as I have lived with you and amongst you. To take your life and to use it to raise up others. This is who I am, God says. This is what I have done. This is what I have given life for and this world for. Not to dominate over you, but to help you to be the best you you can be. And ultimately, we see that we are made for love. We are made for love. We see this breathed in the very beginning of creation, but we see this really literally walked out. God journeys with the people, and the people that sometimes are, are well, in fact, oftentimes are, are imperfect. All you have to do is open up the Bible anywhere, and you get frustrated because of what the people are doing. These are the people of God, God's holy people, and yet they're doing stuff that drives you crazy, and that's, they're not doing it as examples of how we should be doing it. What they're doing it is to let us know that God has made us for love, and God's love is going to grab hold of you and not let go. The question is, will you love back? Will you love back to the God who has embraced you and made you for love? Because really that's at the heart and soul of what the resurrection and the cross shares with us is that you are loved. You are loved. God didn't come into the earth, live and die and raise. Just because it was a neat parlor trick, it was to let us know the place in the human history this understanding of what we were made for, to be in communion, to be in connection, to be in relationship, to be loved, to share love with one another. <clears throat> Not to let our fears and our anxieties control and dominate what we do or don't do, our desire for things or our pride or our selfishness, to recognize and realize that we're literally made for love. Because
Because that's who God is. God is love. How else could God say and endure what God endured? Why else would God take and come and reveal who God is? It wasn't simply for the matter that this I mean, it just is beautiful to think that the highest of forms would take on the lowest. To think that the highest of forms would pick a dozen ordinary people to be the leaders of a movement. To think the highest form, the most powerful, one that breathed life into the universe would sit there and say, hey, you, Mary, in society, I know that you're considered on the lowest rung of society in the world that you currently live in, but I'm going to have you be the first one to testify to the power of the resurrection. I'm going to have the first one, I'm going to have the angels shout to you that Christ is risen. I will come to you first because I'm going to take that who is at the bottom rung and let you know that this is who I am, that I am a God who loves the creation of this world regardless of where it is at because it is made for my love. And I'm not going to force myself upon you, but I will make sure that it is becomes a center point in human history that it cannot be denied or run away from, that it will be known that I love you. We come here today because of the power of the resurrection, because God's love is real. And it calls us in to this love. And bottom line is, is that, you know what? Here's the deal. We all have reasons not to feel that love. All have pains upon our hearts and our lives. Maybe those pains are because we've made mistakes. Maybe those pains are because something tragic has happened to somebody we loved. Maybe it's because it's just so hard for us to wrap our minds, our hearts, or the depths of who we are around something that seems so impossible. And yet really, we come here today because we have a Lord that sits there and says, I have conquered all. I get your sin and your grief and your shame and your loss, but I want you to know that I have taken that from you. Let it go. I know that you've lost. But just because you've lost does not mean that the ones you have lost are not loved. That I am not working on your very behalf for their salvation and for them to know life eternally. I want you to know whatever struggles you go through, whatever doubts that you have, that I am a God who reaches my hands out and I say, touch I want you to know that I can be victorious over all things God shouts and proclaims because love tells no limits, knows no bounds. And aren't you glad that we have a God who is willing to come and to share and to put this at the exclamation mark and point of who we are called to be? And there is something amazing and that really, I mean, at the heart and soul of it is, is that we have a God who comes and lets us know who God is. And the question is, is that we, our question is, is how are we going to respond? How are we going to respond to this God who wants to be known, who wants to share who God is, who's pouring out? How do we respond? I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes our responses kind of similar to my response in the pool, or what I got back in the pool. We give, not necessarily the best, but we give what we can. That's really the great thing. That's all God asks for. We will get to know me better, God says, for I am real and I am here and I love you. Will you take time to ponder the depths of who I am? Will you take time to trust that not only my love for you, but if, if, if you are made in my image and I love you and I love you because of grace, then that means that the people that are the most distant from you, the people that are most unlike you, the people that you can't stand, guess what? They're made in my image and 
to love them too, and I will love them through grace and through what I have done. We claim and come and live in that. Will you grow in my love? <laughs> Will you choose to get to know me more? Will you choose to live in what I have shared with you through my life and death and resurrection? And so as we come to the table, as we come to this table today, it's a table of all sharing in what God has shared to us. That God loves us. That God has claimed victory in your life. <laughs> Loving your life. That God can conquer all. And that God has claimed you to be an amazing and incredible vessel in this world. And as you're going through and as you're thinking about, you know, how how I knowing God and how I growing in God? That's one of the things, you know, I want to give you an Easter challenge. And this isn't, I said before I share this, I want you to know that, first off, this challenge is not about trying to shame or guilt or make people feel bad. The challenge is ultimately is, is that I know that each and every one of us is made for love. To be made, to be God's children here on earth and to be connected and intertwined together as God's body. And I know that not only the people in this place, but the people in all the churches around town, not only the people that are in the churches, but the people that live in the homes or live on the streets. And I know that it's not just the people in this community, but it's the people in the world, whether they live here or whether they live in the Middle East, that they were made for God's abundance and God's love. And I know that one of the ways that we grow in that is by taking time to worship taking time just to praise and connect, to learn and know more about who God is. I know another way that we learn about that is through communication. Prayer is not about just simply asking. It's, just, it's, it's about a journey of saying, Lord, I know you're out there. In bringing, if you don't get it, if you don't understand it, just taking a moment at time saying, God, I don't even know if you're here. And there's something meaningful and powerful just when we take time to sit and be still. Read a verse a day. Open this book. I, it, it's amazing. The Bible is important and meaningful. Because it's about people like you and me who God has journeyed and walked through and walked with. And sometimes getting to hear their struggles, getting confused by what's going on, it makes us ask questions. And it helps us not only ask questions about who they are, but about who we are and about who God is which really draws us into deeper community together. Find ways to love those who are unlovable. And share it with somebody. Because we have a God who not only shares who God is, but calls us to share back. Calls us to share with each other. Calls us to be love, to be the resurrection power for the world today. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And Christ has claimed you to be the light of the resurrection for the world today. May we live in the fullness of this. And I'm asking, once again, these things, because one of the things that we know is that when we engage and we walk, there's something about engaging with worship and prayer and connection and service that expands our hearts and we start seeing ourselves loving and caring more. And the reality is, is after four weeks of doing this, now worship can be coming to a place like this, or, you know, some people work on Sundays, you can connect with the internet or something along those lines. Wednesday night worship service, it doesn't necessarily need to be this place, but I encourage you to connect. And the reason why is it's because it does, we know that it expands people's hearts. Helps them to be generous and give because we have a giving, loving, caring God. <coughs> so as we prepare ourselves to come to this table, May our hearts
hearts be touched by God's loving grace. May God's love expand the depths of who we are. Let us pray. God, I love the fact that you are all around us. And that little boy swimming just wanting to be noticed and known, Lord, you breathe life into your creation. You breathe life into our very being. You breathe life into those around us. You share the depths of your word and who you are. You want to be known. And you want us to know the fullness of who you are because, Lord, the deeper we connect, the more we grow, the more our love and our hearts expand. And the more they expand, the more we're willing to give up ourselves to others, not because we feel like a sense of more obligation, but because we can't help it. We love you and we love the world. And, Lord, our, our hearts are pained and so much so sometimes that we grow apathetic or we make ourselves grow distance. We stop caring about the difficulties and the struggles that go on in the world. We think about the struggles that people have with anxiety, stress, addictions, depression, especially in the light of what happened with the flights in the Alps. We pray for the family of that pilot and for the families who lost somebody. We pray, Lord, you know, when people feel hopeless, when they feel confused, they feel a loss of control, Lord, sometimes they use your name, the name of God, to justify trying to gain a sense of control back. And they do terrible and evil things. Maybe that's why, Lord, when you said it, when you came down to this world, you didn't build an army, you didn't fight. But you let the armies of this world crucify you and kill you. Let you know that the, the way of, 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 of real power is, is, is sacrificial love. Laying one's life down to lift others up. So Lord, we pray. We pray for the families in Canada. But we pray for also the communities and the places where, Lord, there is that voice that is telling people in your name to fight. Help us, Lord, as your body to know how to love and to care into the Middle East and beyond. And Lord, we pray for in our own lives and in our own families. Help us to be wise in loving and caring those around us. Help us to seek you so Lord we can grow in being able to care and raise up those around us. Our family, our friends. And we thank you, Lord, for the way that you walked in this world, raising up people, helping them to understand who you were, your image, so they could share it with us. So we could all know to be a reflection of who you are. And now we join together saying the prayer that you taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine 